Hello YouTube and welcome to this channel. In this uh, tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the electrostatic simulator in order to be able to calculate the cylindrical capacitance as a simple example uh, that I'm going to show you here. This is one of the examples that I found in the Maxwell, uh, Maxwell uh, basically uh, tutorial sessions and uh, I found it like interesting and I tweeted a bit and I uh, wanted to show you guys as well um, in this video. So uh, what we're looking here is a, a cross-section of a cylindrical capacitor and uh, what you have in the middle and shown with the diameter of A is the central uh, uh, cable or like uh, material and then on the outside we have a ring that is again um, in, with the nature of conductive uh, material uh, and has basically uh, a negative charge on it uh, in this uh, scenario and um, has a diameter of B. Okay, so if you go through the calculation, you can realize that depending on the length of this uh, cable or this cylindrical capacitor, um, we can have different amount of capacitances. Um, and it's actually a linear relationship between the capacitance and the length of this uh, cylindrical capacitance. Um, the relationship is, stands very clearly. It's 2 pi uh, epsilon naught uh, times the length divided by the natural log of B divided by A, where B is the uh, diameter of the, uh, the bigger ring and A is the diameter of, sorry, the cylindrical the, the radius, which is the same, diameter or radius of the smaller um, ring in the middle. Another ring, actually the, the solid uh, cylinder in the middle. In our scenario, we are going to have a B of 1.5 millimeter in this simulation and A of 0.5 millimeter. And of course, the length is going to be much bigger than B in order to, to, uh, to have this equation correct. And uh, to do that, we are looking at 30 millimeter of uh, L. Even more than that should be enough, but it's still, we will stay with this one. So that will end up uh, for us a capacitance of 1.518 picofarad. So let's see if we can actually calculate this and see if the result makes sense. Okay, here I have the very blank uh, my Handsoft Maxwell version 14. And um, I already saved the project as capacitance in, uh, in the desktop. And now I'm going, I'm going to uh, insert a 3D model as always and make sure that the 3D model under the solution type is set to the electrostatic where we can calculate the capacitance. Now, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give it a not right name to the Maxwell 3D file here that we have. Uh, let's call it cylindrical cap. And, um, and now that we know that it is an electrostatic, uh, we can now ca start uh, running our um, model. So in this uh, first video of the tutorial, I'm going to go through the model and show you how to, the, to make the model as it looks um, in, the, in the presentation that I showed you. So let's go ahead and select uh, a material. Um, instead of vacuum, we can go copper. Okay, now that we select copper, we can go and select our uh, polygon tool here. And uh, if you want to put the values that I'm putting underneath, um, at X you want to uh, put 0, at Y you want to put 0, and at Z you want to put minus 5 millimeter. So these are all in millimeters, the units, and you can change it. Um, you can follow it up in some of my videos that I show you how to change the unit. So everything here is in unit. So this would be the center of the, the cross section of the polygon that you are creating at uh, z equals minus 5 millimeter. I'm pressing OK, and I'm going to now enter the, the, uh, the radius of that. So in the radius part, we want to have A equals 0.5, as you remember in the, in the figure. So I'm going to put DX equals 0.5, DY 0, and DZ equals 0. And uh, that will give us uh, what we were looking for. And then again, for um, how this uh, polygon is going to go up, 
we want to say that we don't want to have any skew in x or y direction so dx and dy equals zero but dz we will put like a value of uh, 25 sorry 30 which would be the length of our uh, cylindrical coil there we go and the number of segments can be increased to um, basically increase our accuracy here I'm putting 24 seg segments and I'm pressing OK on that and on the ad attribute I want to call this one basically the, the inner and uh, make sure that the color is representative so let's, let's give it like a copper color and um, when it comes to uh, um, transparency, I don't think that much transparency is required for this, so I'm gonna just put it zero. Okay, cool. Um, next is right there. Okay. Next, I'm gonna again do this polygon tool, and I'm gonna now create a gap. It's a tool that I can use to basically um, delete. Um, the the outer part uh, middle so basically peel it off in the middle and then I create the gap between the inner part and the outer ring so to do that we are gonna go again and say the center is gonna be 0 0 and minus uh, 5 again so we put uh, 0 0 um, minus 5 and then the dx is going to be 1.5 okay and then for the uh, height of it dx and dy is 0 and the dz is going to be 30 the same way that we had over there and the number of segments is going to be again 25 this is going to be called tool and uh, doesn't matter if it's copper and we will like uh, get rid of this after we use it once Pressing OK, and uh, one last time we want to have another uh, section here, and again we want to have uh, basically 0, 0, and minus 5, and then we want to have now here this is the, out, the the thickness of the ring that we have so it has nothing to do with the B or the capacitance in a way but you can basically say whatever you want in this case I'm gonna put one point uh, something bigger than 1.5 so 1.8 for example so it gives us a 30 uh, sorry 0.3 millimeter uh, of the thickness for the outer ring and um, and then a zero for the rest and of course when it comes to the the height of it I'm gonna have 30 Okay, and same 24 segments should be okay. This time I'm gonna call this thing the outer, and uh, you know you can have uh, a proper transparency in order to to be able to see things. So I'm gonna make it at least uh, some level of transparent, and uh, same copper, perhaps different slightly color, and uh, that's that's how we uh, basically create the the outer uh, the outer link as well. So Okay, now it's time to uh, subtract the, uh, the basically outer from the tool. So we select the outer, and the tool, and then we select the subtract uh, tool, and make sure that the tool part is going to be tool, and uh, the rest should be okay. So press OK on this, and that will give us the uh, this, the formal shape that we were looking for. So, as you can see, this is uh, this is basically what we are looking for. Um, okay. Cool. So, what else I'm going to do is I'm going to define a region, and that will basically conclude our um, tutorial here. So I just click on the region and uh, basically uh, make it to have a different style of padding for um, so basically what we can do is we can say 300 and then so basically for the X's we want to have 300 and also for the Y's we want to have 300 but when it comes to the Z, we want to have zero padding, and that's basically good for the terminals that we are defining. And so let it to be zero for the Z uh, paddings.
Cool. This will be um, our uh, total uh, figure, and uh, I will continue this on the next uh, tutorial for uh, how you can uh, run for the excitation.